video we're going to be taking a look at how to create a zig project using zig build so in the last video we took a look at um, installing the zig compiler and now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to use zig build to create a new zig project so the first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to do a make dir um, we're going to call it zig tutorial and we're going to cd into that zig tutorial and once we're inside the zig tutorial um, the next thing we're going to do is to call zig build now there's a couple of options we could specify so we can choose hyphen hyphen help um, i guess that's hyphen h nope zig build help uh, i have no idea why this oh zig help yeah so Zig Help is actually what we gotta use, and now you can see we have a bunch of options here. So we have the init exe and init lib. So what this is going to do is it's going to allow us to the init exe allows us to create an application. So it's going to create an application template for Zig, and we also have the init lib, which is going to create a library template. So in this video, we're going to be looking at creating the application template. So to do that, we're going to do zig, uh, zig, not zib. So init exe. Remember that we're doing that from the zig tutorial folder. So whatever project you're creating, make sure that you're cd into the folder, and then you call zig init exe. And once you do that, the zig project has been created. And out of the box, following the instruction we have here, we could do zig build run. To make sure that our project is created and everything looks okay and if you wait for a few seconds you're going to get your output which is going to be all your code bases all your code base that belong to us pretty much so this is what we have right so the next thing we have to do is we got to open the project inside of visual studio code so this is this hello does zig is what we had in the last video so the next thing we're going to do now is to open the folder so to open our folder, we're going to go to where I stored this. I stored this in dev. Uh, I have zig tutorial and I'm going to click open. So this is our project. We have zig tutorial. So we're going to go into the, so let's just take a look at a project structure before we continue. So you see here that we have this build of zig file. Um, so before we take a look at what is inside the build of zig file, um, we're going to look at the source folder. So the source folder is actually where we store all of our source files. So all of our project source files is going to live in the source folder. We also have the zig cache. So the zig cache is where the compiler stores all of the caching and stuff that it uses to build our project. So we mostly usually don't really need to care about the zig cache folder. So we can just ignore it. We have the zig out. So the zig out folder is where zig is going to provide outputs for our executable or libraries and whatever it is we're building in our project so in this case we're building binaries so we have the zig tutorial here and this is where it's to store zig out slash bit so the domain is also a folder right so now i said we're going to take a look at the build the zig file so here we are and so you can find here that all we have inside of here is just a single import now you don't have to understand what all of these um do because you don't really understand the zig syntax yet right so we're going to take a look at everything as we go but just understand that every time you want to build a project using the uh, build a zig file um just has a, it just has this function called build that takes in a builder so the builder is how you're going to create um you're going to create it's going to you know give instructions to the compiler on how to create your project so here for example it's saying uh standard target options so what's target what standard target options mean if i go back to the terminal for a minute you're going to do um zig build help you're going to see some instructions here so for example the target options we have so we have these uh, project specific options so for the standard target options, it allows you to pick a target. So a target, which is the CPU architecture, the operating system, and the ABI. And so if we go back to, if I can do that, yeah. So we have the standard target options. We also have the standard release options. So the release option specifies the release mode for our project. So these are the standard release options we have. 
So we could specify one of these three. For example, we could say release safe, release fast, or release small. So this is going to allow us to have. Um, so this is going to allow us to have a, you know a, a release mode that we could use inside of our project. Um, there's there are defaults for this. So for example, in uh, by default we're not going to have any release mode. We're going to build in debug mode because we didn't specify release. Um, also, the target is going to be native. So if we don't specify a target, then it's going to build for the native architecture on your. Uh, it's going to be for the native architecture, uh, on your system, which is the host system, which is this Mac that I'm currently running on. So once we have sorted standard target and start uh, standard release options, the next thing we look at is the executable that we want to build. So we have this add executable um, function called on this builder struct, and this as this is asking for a name. So here, if I hover over this, you're gonna see that it's asking for a name, and it's also looking for a root source. So what, is it, what, what this is doing here is we want to create an executable and it wants to know the entry point to the executable. So here, this is the name of our executable, which is zig underscore tutorial. And the root is actually source slash main dot zig. So if we want to find out, this is relative to the build dot zig file. And we, should, we find source slash main dot zig here. And so that is how we create the executable. So there's a bunch of other things we want to set. So the target we got from the command line arguments, uh, also the build mode. So this is either going to be debug or release fast, release safe, or release small. So we also have the target here, which specifies, of course, the CPU and host operating system that you want to build for. And then you're going to do exe.install. So what this exe.install is going to do is it's going to allow you to... The exe.install is going to make sure that whenever the project is built it is sent to the zig out slash bin um you know folder so that you can see it so that's what exe.install does now also we have this run command so the run command is actually um something that is going to give you the ability to be able to run your project so it's going to have all the instructions and steps to be able to run your project and so this is how you create the run command. You do exe.run. As you can see here, we have a comment that says create a run step, you know, build with add, add executable. So you could add command line arguments here with add arg. So for example, if you want to add, if your program depends on arguments and requires it, and so you could add arguments using the run command here. So you can see the run command has a step and it depends on the get install step. So what this means is that if you if we want to run our program, um, it's going to have to install this first, right? So which means that once it installs the program inside of the zig out bin, um, then we could actually run the program, right? And here we say that if we have arguments, um, if our build, so if we if our builder has arguments, which means uh, we'll pass arguments to our program, then we're gonna give this to the run command here. Once we do that, the next thing we're gonna do now is the run step. So we create a step for run and if you want to see what the step looks like if i go back to the terminal and i do uh, zig build uh, zig build help again you're going to find that here we have a bunch of steps here and the run step is created here so this run step is actually here so this is where we create the run step right and so once you so you look at the step run the app so this is a description just as we have here so which means if we edit this and we save and we try this, then we should get, you know, what is this? Yeah, we should get that, um, you know, that change we made. So run the app, Z, whatever. So we're going to wait for that to happen. And here we have run the app, Z. So you can see that this is actually where the um, um, stuff happens. So if I if I do zig build run for example this is the instruction that is going to that the compiler is going to follow to build my to build and run my project so as you can see here what happens here is that now um, so the run step is going to depend on the run command step which means that whenever the user says that we want to run this application um, it's going to first of all go through the run command. Now, as you can see, the run command also depends on the install step uh, for the build. What is this? Right. So the run command also depends on the install step for this build. 
and the install step for a build is actually <coughs> is also stored uh um, has also stored um, um building and installing the executable um for you know the build that we've added and so this is what allows us to be able to build our project and run it well, we also have tests so you can see we've configured tests here and so we say build add test so the test can also be stored inside of our main.zig um currently if we check our source main.zig you can see we have a basic test here so that means that we can actually build our project using the test and to be able to test our program how we do that is very simple we just do the build test and once we run this after it's done building you're going to see the test output if the test passes your test fails so you can see all one test is passed so the only test we have in our main zig actually passed so and also to create a test so you can see the test is here we also set the target and the build mode and when we created the test step which is actually what run the unit tests and then we depend on you know the executable test so that we can actually build and uh, run the test that we have here and yes that is everything you need to know about the zig build and setting up a zig project so the next thing we're going to look at is the main file which is what actually you know um, is run and every time zig wants to run it looks for it wants to run an executable it looks for this main function as you can find here so you can see this is what is responsible for actually printing this out and if you look carefully you're going to find that this looks very similar to what we had in the last video where we were testing our zig installation so that'll be all for this video i hope you guys understand how zig how the zig build system works now a little bit and we're going to be going a little bit more in depth on you know um some specifics of the zig build system but for now i think this is sufficient and that'll be all for this video thank you guys for watching make sure you like and subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next one